All right, hello everyone. My name is Michaela, and I'm the content marketer here at Nextcloud. And today I'll be talking about why European governments are moving towards open source. All right, so Microsoft and Google, we all know them, um, yet even though I would like love to not have um, these logos up here today, um, we have to realize that they do have a brand presence um, in all of society and we have to accept that. But um, why are European governments moving away from big, company, big tech companies like this? All right, so there's three reasons why um, European governments, um, all other companies and organizations are moving away from big tech. So the first reason uh, is vendor lock-in. Uh, so Microsoft Teams uh, is the default program when you install Windows, and so it's very simple for companies to start using this product and eventually uh, use other Microsoft products. So eventually, over time, uh, companies become dependent on these big companies, and then that limits their flexibility. Um, and yeah, whenever like Microsoft, for example, they make a big change in their systems, um, this means that they have no right, they don't have no say in it, so they have to do what they want. So that's a little about vendor login. Uh, the second reason why European governments are moving away from big tech is because uh, they are not data secure and private. This is something we all know why we're here today. And thirdly, uh, they're not GDPR compliant, which brings me to the next slide. All right, so I'm not sure if any of you have heard of the US Cloud Act. Um, but it's a, a, a current US act. Um, basically, um, big tech companies like Microsoft and Google, they are forced to um, hand over any data uh, in their systems, even if it's from overseas, over to American government authorities like the FBI uh, at any time upon request. Um, and this, this was a, a huge, huge ordeal. Um, so another um, point I wanted to bring up was the European Court of Justice decision called Schrems II in 2020. And this invalidated the US-EU privacy shields on account of these US surveillance and data transfer programs. So today, um, Privacy Shields is, of course, invalid. And what uh, the US and EU have been working on is called the Transatlantic Data Privacy Framework. And this is definitely under question and criticism as uh, people do not believe it's really going to make any big changes. All right, so the first example I'd like to talk about uh, is with the state of Baden-Württemberg in Germany. Their procurement chamber, uh, just this July, made a non-appealable decision that the transfer of personal data to a country outside the EU is impermissible under GDPR. And for a long time now, these schools have relied on Microsoft 365 products, uh, but they, they now have to switch to data private solutions. So this is a huge step forward, um, at least in one state of Germany. The second example I'm giving today um, is in Helsinger, Denmark. This is a very small city that has recently come uh, to the attention of big news um, because Denmark's data protection regulator found that local schools aren't really understanding what Google is doing with their students' data. Um, it's come into concern that students' data is actually being used to improve um, Microsoft or um, Google services and training its artificial intelligence. And so they have made the decision this school year to block around 8,000 students from using Google Chromebooks. In 
And the last example is in Sweden. Uh, their procurement office as well has decided that big tech companies are a breach of GDPR. And for example, the National Research and Education Organization has decided to switch to open source. And Nextcloud has a really great case study on 750,000 students uh, switching to open source solution. So based off these three examples, um, what we can expect is a huge ripple effect across Europe. More and more government leaders are looking towards open source and Sometimes it isn't up to the whole European Union um, GDPR. Uh, individual countries and their leaders have to start making decisions to move to open source. So hopefully we're gonna see this in effect more and more. Yeah, so we'll see who's next. Um, I just wanted to point out this really awesome study by the European Commission. Um, we, there's a big uh, section on Nextcloud in there as we are considered a role model for open source businesses in this study. So definitely check that out if you have time. It's in one of our blogs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so thank you. And if you'd like to learn about any more of these topics or data privacy issues, um, just check out the blogs uh, for our Privacy Wednesday campaigns. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michaela, for spotlighting all these stories and writing them for us, because you're actually doing all the research and writing all those great articles. So thank you so much for that. All right.